On your mark, get set, be rich. Thanks to Be Rich, I'm here at Brandywine Elementary. I'm outside of Children's Development Academy. We're here with Family Promise of Forsyth. We're here at Helping Hands Ministry. I'm standing here in front of Pindari Restoration House. City of Refuge. Downtown Academy. Uh, Christian Ministry Thrift Store. And Real Fit World The Ministry. Homeless Liaison of Forsyth the North County. The North Co-op. Mercy Health Center. Fusion Australia. Australia. Academy. And I get to deliver this check because of your generosity during Be Rich. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. We're so glad you're here with us today because today is a very special Sunday. Yep. We are celebrating Be Rich, our annual extravaganza of generosity. And thanks to you and your generosity, we've got a lot to celebrate. We have a lot to celebrate because as you've heard me say, the need is greater than ever because yes. of the pandemic and you have come through well, you're about to find out. I will say this, your extraordinary generosity in this season continues to make an extraordinary difference in the lives of those who are served and loved on by the nonprofit organizations that we work with all year long, both here in the United States and all around the world. That's exactly right. This year, 191 projects have already been funded through Be Rich 2020. Today, we've got a look back, we've got stories, we've got interviews, we've got 30 minutes of nothing but good news. Trust me when I tell you, you will leave encouraged and inspired. Yep, so stick around. At the end, we're gonna give you some totals, but in the meantime, sit back and relax. This is Be Rich. It started in 2007 with three churches and one simple goal. We will partner with incredible nonprofits who are already making a difference and multiply their efforts. That year, we raised just over $400,000 and served over 2,800 hours, all benefiting our nonprofit partners. But more importantly, we unleashed a wave of generosity we believed was worth repeating. As years passed, our network of churches grew, and as it did, that wave spread its reach across the globe. Hundreds of thousands of people were inspired to be generous in response to God's extravagant generosity towards them. As a result, our partners were able to make a bigger impact than they could have ever imagined. This year, 68 churches across 21 states and six countries have come together to help write an ending to 2020 that is marked by hope. Today, we will celebrate the wave of generosity that began 14 years ago and continues today. We will celebrate remarkable stories of impact, the full scope of which we may never know. And we'll start back where it all began. Our first story, the Atlanta Community Tool Bank. Hey, I'm Kim. I'm here at the Atlanta Tool Bank where these guys are about to deliver a check on behalf of your generosity during Be Rich. Here we go. Thank you, buddy. Thank you guys. We're, we're the only nonprofit tool lending organization in Atlanta. Um, while there are other for-profit tool lending companies, we want to make sure that we do this as cheaply as possible so that other organizations can borrow those tools and invest the money that they would have spent on borrowing tools from somebody else back into the community. This year's been a, a unique year for us. Uh, usually we are lending tools for service projects where groups are cleaning up neighborhoods and uh, painting schools and planting trees. Uh, this year we focused a lot on, on COVID and those organizations on the front lines. So we've been lending all of our tools for free this year for things like uh, feeding and sheltering, uh, focused a lot on food security, working with different farmers and community gardeners and stuff like that. Um, this is gonna be huge for us because of that loss of income, because we wanna be able to make sure that we could continue to have an impact in our community. We know um, everybody on every level has had their own struggle. Um, folks have lost jobs, folks have had their hours cut back. 
Um, and and it's, it's been a difficult year in terms of fundraising. We understand that um, and we're just trying to do everything we can to get through this year and, and on to the next. So the fact that people were still able to give um, is, is going to mean a lot to us. This is huge. This is, like I said before, going to help us keep our lights on and, and keep my staff and uh, allow us to continue supporting our community. Now let's travel to Forever Fed. They help bring food and clothing to underserved families in need across Cherokee County. Because public transportation is so limited, Forever Fed's mobility is key to reaching the most vulnerable. We are here today at Forever Fed, one of my favorite places, and we get to deliver an incredible check because of your outstanding generosity. Tell me, what would Be Rich allow you to do for the remainder of the season? Our hope is to get back to our mobile model more frequently because People are having to drive so far, and everyone's hitching rides with everybody. Um, we are hoping for a, another truck that's more like a beverage truck that has the rolling sides on it, ah. so that we can pull all of those dry goods onto a lot, and people can go through a line, still be socially distanced. They can go down each side of the truck and grab what they need. One of our other um, challenges is that we're drawing larger crowds. Mm -hmm. So it's no more 50 to 65 families per pantry, it's 125. And an, it's really hard to turn people away when they come out. So every time we go out and we're drawing this crowd, um, the folks that come, everybody can receive food. This year, yeah, that that is what we're hoping to do is get back to that mobile model by the beginning of next year. It is my absolute honor <gasps> to gift you with this, to further the important work that you and Forever Fed are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, but you still have to look at it. Okay, okay, I'm dying. You know I'm dying. <gasps> Thank you so much. It's just amazing because it means that we can actually get mobile again. And um, the community is going to be so greatly loved and appreciative of everything that you guys are sacrificing. Thank you. Now, let's head north to hear from Sabrina, the social worker for Dawson County Schools. Well, we've got some um, fun news to share with you, Sabrina. Okay. <laughs> well, you know how we talked about a few months ago what would be helpful um, to you to be able to help your students and families. Right. Right? Okay, well, I just sent you an email. Wow, okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Because of generosity of our church and yes. just God's provision, um, we've been able to help you all out this year and help you be able to help your students and families. And you know that with, with this COVID issue that we've had so many issues with people losing jobs and, you know, being displaced and, uh, and the kids don't understand, especially the younger ones. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it will, it will help a lot of people. Thank you very much. A couple of days ago, I made a home visit to a little boy that had been out um, for like six days. Mom came to the door. She said that he had been sick. And the last time that he was at school, he sat in the bathroom all day. I asked him about that. And he said, because the kids make fun of my clothes and they make fun of my teeth. He said, am I in trouble? And I said, of course you're not in trouble. I'm here to help you. And of course, mom started crying and then he started crying. And, um, you know, I explained to him, you know, we'll get you clothes, we'll get you to the dentist help you to feel better about yourself so that you can get your education and I'm not giving up on you and he just cried and cried and cried he was 10 years old oh, wow. he was like he was like I didn't know that anybody cared about me at all a, a lot of families have lost hope and so when I show up and say yes I can help you it's like they they're almost and um, they don't believe me until you know, it actually happens. This has kind of bridged the gap to keep families up and running. We're so glad you are where you are. So I think we make a great partner. <laughs> it may be surprising to learn that North Metro Atlanta has the highest growth of suburban poverty in the nation, and families led by single mothers make up the majority of those living below the poverty line. Let's go visit the Drake House and hear how they support and empower these families. 
The Drake House provides a lifeline of crisis housing and supportive programming to single mothers who are experiencing homelessness so they can keep their families intact and recover from that circumstance with dignity. Without the Drake House, single mothers who have children, male children over the age of 12, would not be able to stay with their kids, with their families. So those male children over the age of 12 would have to go to a men's shelter rather than being with their moms. When you think of it in terms of how important it is, not just to the moms, I think it's more so the children, they get to be in a space that is, they can call home, even if only for a short period of time, to take that pause that they need and recover from the circumstance and restore housing stability. With the event of COVID, you know, everybody has to shelter in place. And how do you shelter in place if you have no shelter? So we were so grateful to be able to serve families during that time because we were able, all of our families have their own place to stay. They have their own fully furnished apartment that has all the amenities of home that is their home. To those who gave so generously to be rich, I would just like to say to you, um, thank you so much for caring enough to help these families who have gone through the worst of it and maybe have lost a bit of their belief in community. Um, the time that you spend on our campus and the contributions that you've made to the upkeep of our campus financially, to me, it, it restores our hope and our faith in community and what it means to support one another and uh, invest in each other's stability. And we thank you. Thank you. Now, let's hear how you've supported Lighthouse Family Retreat, an organization serving families living through childhood cancer. We've been so fortunate to be part of uh, Be Rich, and it's been such an incredible blessing to us as an organization. At Lighthouse, we strengthen families that are living through childhood cancer, and we do that in two ways. We provide retreats for our families to be able to get away, whether that's week-long beach retreats or a one-day regional retreat. And we provide helpful resources to see that there's hope in something bigger than just hope in a cure, but a hope in Jesus. Uh, for us in 2020, it's been pretty tough. Uh, we had to cancel uh, 25 out of 26 retreats. It's been dramatically different than anything we had hoped or planned for our families. Um, but it, it forced us to completely shift who we were this year from a what we do, but not from the, the true sense of who we are in our, in our mission. Thanks to you and your generosity at Be Rich, we're gonna be able to fund and fully fund our community of care initiative next year and unbelievable and do our one day regional retreats next year, five of them next year, uh, where we can take Lighthouse to our families that can't come on a beach retreat. Without you, there's no way we could or would want to do what we do. Serving and strengthening families that are living through childhood cancer, that is Be Rich. Now it's time to visit MedShare. COVID-19 has thrown the world into a medical crisis. MedShare is directly involved in helping those on the front lines of this pandemic. Hey, this is Clay with Buckhead Church. I'm standing outside of MedShare, an incredible organization. And because of your generosity, we're about to give them an awesome gift. Let's go. This is a, uh, a gift from our church to you. Oh followers. my God. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I want so bad to oh, hug you. Seriously, that's, that's, that means a lot. Are you crying? Yeah, oh, you know, I, this, is, uh, this is good. I think the best way to describe MedShare is through our vision and through our mission statement. It's to improve the quality of life of people and the planet, and that's what we do. We do it by repurposing surplus medical supplies and equipment to impoverished communities around the world to provide healing and hope to those that need it. A lot of this money is going to go toward our, our ability to procure and, and, and distribute PPE. And PPE is personal protective equipment. We want to continue to be there for those frontline health workers 
making sure they get the personal protective equipment that they need so they can continue to save lives. But also our focus is on the general population. So we're gonna be partnering more with schools, with uh, homeless shelters, with community practitioners to make sure that, you know, that marginalized communities can have the masks, the coverings that they need also to protect them. I get a chance to engage a lot of people, a lot of donors, a lot of supporters, but I won't be rich to know that none has impacted me on a personal level as you have. Uh, and the reason I said it is because you share in our joy of uplifting communities around the world. You continue to give tirelessly to an organization that's supporting people that you don't even know. And I always quote Mandela, who said, there's no greater gift that you can give than your time, energy, and expect nothing in return. And you continue to give and you expect nothing in return. So from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say I thank you. Now, let's sit down with some of our long-term partners and hear about the impact your generosity has had over the years. Well, Joni, Eddie, and Megan, thanks to each of you for taking time to sit with us today. To start, I'd love to hear more about your organization and who you serve. Kick things off with us, Joni. Well, I'm with the place of Forsyth County. We are a social service agency. We offer food, financial assistance, workforce training, a lot of youth services and senior services. Our goal is to move people into self-sufficiency. Mm, that's so good. Eddie, how about you? Well, Eagle Ranch is a, a home for 42 boys and 24 girls. And our ultimate goal is family restoration and reunification. We uh, do individual group and family counseling. We have a SACS accredited school for our middle schoolers. Uh, but everything that we do is pointed toward getting children back home, whoever is in that parental role, whether it's a single mom, grandparents, aunts, uncles, that's who we connect with to um, help them work through the issues that brought them to the ranch in the first place. Megan, last but certainly not least, tell us a little bit more about yourself as well. Uh, certainly, yes. So I'm with the Furniture Bank, and our mission is to create stability for families by providing furniture. So basically what we do is give essential household furniture to families that are moving out of homelessness um, or fleeing domestic violence or low income and having some sort of life crisis that left them without furniture. So we make sure they have beds for sleeping in, tables to share meals. And we really believe that by providing furniture, we're helping our families have a more stable life and stay in housing. That's so good. Megan, you could take this next question as well. What has been the most encouraging thing about your partnership with Be Rich? So I don't even know where to begin with this one because <laughs> Be Rich has been such an instrumental part of the Furniture Bank yeah. and how we're able to reach our goals every year. All the volunteers that come through Be Rich, the staff from Be Rich, um, we know that you believe in what we do and that you guys are here to help us make it happen, whether it be through funding or through your time. And it just makes, you know, carrying out our mission possible. That's so good. I love that. Eddie, most encouraging thing about the partnership? I, I think it's y'all's readiness to do, to address our biggest need as as opposed to we only fund this or we fund this or fund wow, this that's but good. you say what what do y'all need from us and that's what we want to meet and and that's financially but it's also through the volunteers mm. too well, hey, speaking of volunteering, you all mentioned that a little bit in uh, just your overview. I'd love for you all to tell us uh, what that has meant for your organization. Of course, giving and resources are great, and that's a big component of what we do. But also, the volunteering and the serving aspect is so much a part of the Be Rich heartbeat as well. So, Joni, what has the volunteering and serving, what has that done for you and the place of Forsyth? Well, I think that volunteering is one of the hardest things to give to give of your time and your talent. It's easy to write a check sometimes, but it's really hard to step in there and become, to interact with clients or to support the staff. We could not do what we do um, without the volunteers. We're a small organization and they, they run our services, so many of them. And Be Rich has been great because so many people become long-term volunteers because they were first Be Rich volunteers. Um, we're totally dependent on them. I, I sort of echo what, what Joni said. I mean, the volunteer hours we get, you, you just can't replicate that through your staff. And, and when the, the Be Rich volunteers come out, they're, they're just so positive positive. 
It's not just about going out and doing landscape projects or painting or anything. It's like this has helped moving the mission forward uh, for Eagle Ranch. Yeah, that's so good. Megan, how about you? When I got the first call ever from Buckhead Church, um, it was probably 11 or 12 years ago. And they said, you know, we want to send volunteers every weekend and this many. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'll have a staff person there in case they show up, you know. And then they came and they came every week and they did exactly what they said they were going to do and more. Um, and it was just amazing. The volunteers from Be Rich, they are ready to serve in whatever way I need them to, right? So if it is that we need furniture built or we need help organizing, um, it can be a Exciting task or a boring task, they are ready to serve. Okay, so Joni, the place of Forsyth has been partnering with Be Rich for about nine years now. What does that partnership allow you to do that you otherwise might not have been able to do? Well, Be Rich allows us to dream big. It allows us to look at our community and what the residents need, um, to f step into gaps that are there in services, and we have a dream about it, and then Be Rich comes alongside and says, we'll partner with you to wow. meet that dream. Um, so throughout all of our services that we offer, um, Be Rich has been walking alongside of us to meet the client's needs, to help with funding, and to send volunteers. Every service we have has been touched by Be Rich. So good. So good. Megan, the Furniture Bank has also been partnering with Be Rich for about nine years. Same question for you. So much of the funding you've given us has helped new programs start, helped programs that we have grow. Um, when we got our first gift from Be Rich, we served about 900 families a year, and now we're at about 1,900 families a year. And so just the, the change and the impact you've had is really amazing. Eddie, we've been partnering with Eagle Ranch for about seven years now. Same question for you. We are, are just so appreciative of the gifts that have helped us in just sustainability. The, you, our, our current program you know, has needs to be able to provide this haven for almost 70 children. And so y'all coming alongside us uh, in, in some really practical ways, whether it's uh, uh, renovating age facilities, uh, helping with some existing staff salaries, that, that's, been a big, um, that's been a big boost for us. And a lot of people just walk past that sustainability, but you've, you've got to take care of what you have. Well, you each received a check this year. Take a second and just let us know how those funds will impact you and your organization in this coming season. Joni, we'll start with you. Well, we're very excited for those funds this year because we've really had started a lot of work towards at-risk youth and young adults. And this is gonna enable us to expand it and even continue it. We'll get to repeat our summer internship program for young adults. And we will soon be opening the cottage, which is a home for homeless 18 to 22 year old women. Um, and then we have a child care subsidy for working families that are struggling to get back on their feet, to get jobs and sustain themselves. And so we can walk alongside them with a child care subsidy so that their children are taken care of. So we are thrilled to have the funds to be able to continue those programs. Yeah, I love that. Megan, over at the Furniture Bank, how will these funds impact y'all in this coming season? Well, as always, the funds seem to always come at the right time yeah. when we really need them. Um, but the funding this year is filling two holes that really left um, because of the pandemic. So um, two things happened when we had to close down. One, we generate some revenue through fees when we pick up donations um, and things like that and mattress recycling. And we lost those fees for about three months when we had to close and retailers were closed. And so we use those funds to pay for truck expenses. Um, and truck expenses are not very glamorous, right? It's hard to find a foundation that wants to pay for truck fuel and truck maintenance. Um, yet it is really important to what we do because we're not delivering furniture to clients unless we have trucks that run. And so some of your funds are going towards that this year. Some of the funds also will be used to um, purchase furniture in an emergency so that we don't have to say no to clients when they come. Eddie, Eagle Ranch, how about y'all? Well, the, the, two, the two things that funds went toward, one was our uh, house parent, and program assistant salaries that, and they live in the home with the children, with the boys or with the girls, and they provide that uh, respite, that, that home-like atmosphere that is so crucial to our children's healing. And uh, more than once I've had a, a child come up to me and say, somehow I feel younger here 
at Eagle Ranch. And so what we're doing is giving a lot of these children back their childhood and those house parents and program assistants are pivotal in, in that. The other uh, gift went toward doing some major renovation on uh, one of our staff homes. Matter of fact, it's the, our director of spiritual life. And to, to be able to come in and replace a roof, do you know, floor covering and all this stuff was such an encouragement to he and his family. Well, listen, you all have a captive audience right now. What would you like to tell the audience that's listening in? Joni? Through your giving, through your volunteering, through your hours, your time, you are changing a community, one person at a time. Mm. Megan? Yes, just that you're making a difference, right? We all have choices to make and... Overwhelmingly, the, the choice to be rich is to give of yourself, your time, your money, and it is life-changing for so many people in Atlanta, and we're so lucky to have you. Mm. Eddie? You know, one of the most challenging things we, we have at Eagle Ranch is encouraging the children who come to us that the first part of their story, which has been difficult, a lot of cases tragic, doesn't have to be predictive of the way the rest of their story is going to go. And that at page 13, or whatever age they come to us, we have the great privilege to intersect their lives, and we're able to come into a child's story because of people like you that help us change the trajectory of the way the rest of their story is going to go. I love that. Thank you so much. Again, thank you all for all that you do. And I, I sincerely mean this on behalf of so many people that maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Uh, we just want to say thank you all for all that you all have done and continue to do in the community. And thank you for allowing us to partner with you in your efforts year after year. To everyone watching today, I hope these stories have helped you catch a glimpse of the incredible work going on all around you and how meaningful your participation is in Be Rich. Alongside our partners, you are helping make a difference and spread hope in our communities. So, thank you. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. We are outside Foster Care Support Foundation. Standing right outside of one of Atlanta Mission's locations. I'm standing outside the Place Cottage. The Atlanta Tool Bank. The Drake House. Champions United Football Club. The Good Samaritan Health Center of Cobb. Perth, Australia. And I'm standing here in front of Fusion. And I'm about to meet with the people from the Decatur Education Foundation. And I'm standing in front of the North Gwinnett Co-op. I am here at No Longer Bound. At Amana Academy. White House Family Retreat. I'm here at Must Ministry. I'm here standing in front of the Pregnancy Problem House. The Coming Women's Center. Wellspring Living. We are here today in front of the house of James Ward, the executive director for Heart for Lebanon. We're going to meet with the guys from Hope Quest and surprise them with your Be Rich generosity. This will probably serve around another 15,000 meals. It's not just this amazing check, 
You guys have stepped up and donated books and school supplies and food. Our kids, our teachers, and our parents are more than appreciative of all the work that you've done. This is huge. This is going to have such a huge impact because, you know, it's been a really, really tough year in Lebanon. If it wasn't for the donations of Be Rich, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, which is to serve. This means so much in a normal year. In 2020, it means 20 times as much. campus that you may never meet. Thank you for saving their lives, reconciling them to their families. Thank you, Be Rich. Thank you, Be Rich, for your kindness. I call this hashtag humanity in action. On behalf of Lighthouse and our staff, uh, we are so grateful for all that you guys do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Be Rich. Well, that was amazing, wasn't it? And here's something else amazing. There are 24 churches in the United States that actually launch their Be Rich campaign this weekend, which means these numbers will continue to increase. So if you were able to participate this year, thank you. You have been the hands and the feet of Jesus. You have done for others what some others could not do for themselves in this season. And that's what it looks like to follow Jesus. And that's why we do Be Rich. As always, thank you so much for joining us and we will see you right back here next time.